evening. I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop and I am so excited to do a live 7 o'clock tonight on Monday. We're going to see how this goes and if it goes good, we'll have some more. Um, I'm going to just shout out some people and where you guys are watching from. So we've got New Jersey, Illinois, California, Oklahoma, Illinois, New Jersey, Florida, Hawaii, Texas, Canada, Michigan, New Hampshire, and we've got Stitch Read Live. She says it's her first time able to watch a live. We've got Kansas, Australia, Kentucky. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Halifax, Nova Scotia, LA, Big D, I think that means Dallas, Plymouth, Michigan, Lake City, Pennsylvania, Plano, Central Florida, Idaho. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So um, I'm so excited you guys are here. So if you've never watched me before, my name is Kimberly and I'm from Fat Quarter Shop. And today, one thing I've been working on a lot this year is like quilts that I can use and make from leftover scraps because I've been auctioning a lot of my quilts for charity. And so I thought, well, I should just use up all these scraps. I used to just bring the scraps and give them to employees left over, but I thought, you know, I should make some stuff with them. So I'm going to kind of show you seven quilts today. They're all very easy, all beginner friendly, and they're different things you could do from something you have already in your stash or from you could plan it with a collection, you can plan it with leftovers, you can kind of do whatever. And um, I'm happy to answer any quilting questions. Um, let's see, we've got Mississippi, Utah, St. Louis, North Carolina. Oh my gosh, Mississippi, Utah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you guys are here. I wasn't sure if you guys would uh, sign on. London, oh that's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to jump in, but just keep commenting. I love to see the comments. And then I'm going to shout out some first timers too, because that'll be fun. Um, so I'm going to kind of start with my books and how I plan. So one of the things I'm going to be doing today is going by the books because it's really hard for me to remember what is what because I work on so many things. So I did start my book for 2023. So I already have 13 quilts planned. I usually go through um, one book a year. So this is my book for this year and I've got 49. So hopefully I can add one more. So I am going to start with my 2022 book and start with Brick House. And a lot of you have probably seen this one before. But this is a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop to all of you. So you could use this with a collection. You can use this with scraps. You can use it with whatever you want to do. But it's a free pattern, so download it um, completely free. Put it in your stack of patterns, and if you don't use it today, you might use it another day. So I was going to kind of show you some things I've done with it. My first quilt, I'll pop that up. That was, uh, I auctioned it off. So thank you to the person who um, won that auction. We auctioned that off for the Rob School Memorial Fund. It finishes at 62 by 66. Of course, you could make it bigger if you wanted to. And each of the blocks end up 12 by 13. And um, I'm going to kind of show you the next blocks I've done because I wanted to make one that I could keep. So I cut these little scraps. These are just the little squares that end up being the cornerstones. So I try to just pick a variety of colors. So when I'm at the end, I've got a little bit from all my blocks. So I've kind of started with those. And this is my first block. This is the Stitched Collection by Fig Tree. And I have made so many quilts with this. And I think my original quilt that I auctioned off might have had this, but I wanted to make it again. So this is stitched. And what I wanted to tell you is this block is super easy, great for beginners. But what's really helpful that I found is using the two and a half inch wide Creative Grizz ruler for these rows and then the three and a half for this row. So that has been super helpful for me having these and they're really um, good because they're like the width of what you need. This is 13 inches tall, but only 12 inches wide. So that's been really helpful. I am gonna show you a tip on this block at the end. You don't really have to do it, but it's just a little tip I have. So that's stitched. 
this next one is Simply Delightful by Sherry and Chelsea. And one thing you'll see is I use different backgrounds each time. And I try to pick a uh, background that doesn't have any busyness going on. And I tried to do a door that was light so I could at least get a light door in. And sometimes I did green all the way across. If I didn't have enough colors, I put a different color over here. This is Buttercup and Slate. And then I thought it'd be good to have a red, white, and blue. So this is Sweetwater fabric. This is Sun Wash. So this is what we're gonna be using for the charity quilt in 2023. So if you haven't joined us before, um, we do have a charity quilt that we give away for free every year. Um, this first pattern is stitched by Fig Tree. This next one is also Fig Tree. It's cinnamon and cream. And guys, the only way I know is I'm reading my notes because I cannot remember any of this. And then this one is also Sherry and Chelsea. This is the Emma collection. And so um, I try to use as many colors as I can and just kind of pay attention to these colors over here. Um, and I try to make my chimney stand out. Um, let's see, this is Daisy Fills by Bev McCullough. And this one, um, this is like kind of green and this is a lighter blue, but I had to like kind of split them up. This is Country Rose by Layla Boutique. And then this is my favorite one. This one is Calico by Lori Holt. So this one was fun because she had the days of the week and I fussy cut that in here. And then I'm gonna kind of show you what I do to uh, trim it down. The Emma collection is not out quite yet. I use all of the fabrics that are left over from cap sets. So here what I wanna show you is my little cheat. Now you don't have to do this and it might confuse some of you, but I wanted to at least give you a chance to see what I do. So these are all two and a half inch squares, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles, two and a half inch squares. But what I've done is on this roof row, I've made everything exactly the right size. But on these rows, I have cut a quarter inch wider on all of these pieces and I've cut a quarter inch longer also and then I've made this taller and wider now that does take a lot of time but I usually piece these one by one and the way that I do these is um, these were the first six I did and I photoed them because I forgot my EQ pictures but what I do is I have a program called the Electric Quilt and I just draw it out and try to figure out how I'm gonna do it so that when I cut, I'm cutting one at a time. And like right there, I must have changed my mind. I usually put the collection names so that I can find where um, I have that fabric. So I do try to plan ahead of time. Um, and right here, I'm gonna show you my little trick on trimming down. And this is something I've been doing recently. I am happy to, happen to love it because everything's coming out really nice. And one thing is, whenever I finish a block, I always trim all four sides. Well, if I've made it bigger, I'm gonna trim all four sides anyway. Why don't I just make it perfect? So, I have a 12 and a half inch wide ruler. I think it's 24 inches tall but this needs to be 20, 12 and a half. So I'm just gonna look and it looks like it's hitting there. And there. And I'm just gonna trim, let's see. I'm gonna trim one side and I'm gonna do that trim anyway. And then I'm just gonna turn it and do the other side. And then I'll show you, um, the other side. So now it looks just like this one. But then this should be 13 and a half this way. But what I'm going to do here is this was cut two and a half. So this should be two and a quarter from the seam. And this should be two and a quarter. And then um, 
So I'm just gonna kind of draw a line with my friction pin, test both sides, and then we'll cut. There is plans for a scrappy pattern, and that is going to be the last thing I show tonight. I get to show you 2023 scrappy pattern. It's totally different. Um, I hope you guys love it. We kind of went out on the limb a little bit and did it. We always try to change it up. So I'm going to talk about that in detail at the end. So it looks like if I trim both of those, I'll be at 13 and a half. I just want to make sure that if this was a little bit short, I would just fudge and cut a little bit wider here. And since I'm making this with scraps anyway, I have plenty left over. It takes a while to get used to, but I think it gives really nice results. So this means with all my blocks, I have 11 done and the quilt uses 16 blocks. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep making these quilts I'm eventually going to find one that I keep for myself and then I'm just going to keep auctioning them off over the over time for different charities that are in need because I have so much fun making them. One thing I did want to show you is right here and right here when you cut when you're um, cutting your corner squares this one's not this is a different one I think it's this one that I got this. So you get these left over. And you also get this one, but I accidentally, um, this rectangle was not big enough, so I fudged there. But these, and what I'm gonna do is save those in this bucket. And I've been showing you guys this bucket, but I'm gonna tease the bucket in a little bit on why I have been showing you this bucket and what you can do with it. So that's kind of a tip. And now I'm gonna just say hi to a bunch of people. So. Let's see, Jessica loves making these houses. I love the colors. Yeah, you guys could comment and tell me which house you like the best. I'm trying to keep it within a collection and then any background that I have, I'll use. Um, we do sell that ruler, it's Creative Grids CGR 1224. Um, and so when I'm cutting bigger, Jacqueline, what I do is I just do a quarter inch bigger, that's all, and um, trim down. Thank you to the super chat from Nadera. Kimberly, you should contact Ulfa about 20 years ago. They did a pink ergonomic 45 millimeter. Maybe they can bring it back. That would be awesome because I love um, the ergonomic. I'm really bad. I, this is the only one I know how to use. What are the average days I quilt? So I would say about 15 hours a week is what I would average. Um, Super chat from Donna Marie Alpa. She says, just finished rocking around from FQS and she's binding it tomorrow. Um, Judith, thank you for the super chat. And then another super chat. Um, Vicki Herod, Kimberly, you make so many quilts and cross stitch item. Is there still fun for you? I do love seeing all of your items. Yes, I still have a ton of fun. I mean, I'm living my life, right? Like I have my dream job. I get to cross stitch, I get to quilt. I get to pick what I like, so that's awesome. And we have a lot of first timers here. We have Kiki, Brittany, um, Paula Dean, Pauline Dean, Bobby Guy. A lot of people from overseas, which is awesome. Kim Bird. Jen Soul, Janie Rosario, Stitch Read Life, Laura Marshall, awesome. So that's our first um, scrappy. And any kind of quilting questions you have, just pop them in. Um, another thing I wanted to point out that I do, and it kind of relates to that last question, is I keep a lot of journals. And I kind of keep journals of what I'm able to do on the weekend. So this was like two weekends ago last weekend this is kind of stuff i kind of did halfway and need to finish and this is kind of a summary so i do kind of keep track of that um but as far as cutting bigger just try to envision whatever you're doing on the edge of a block if you can trim now a lot of people say that's dumb because just cut exact do your seam allowance exact and you don't need to cut and that's totally 
totally um, fine too. So whatever you wanna do, I'm kinda doing this just to change things up and make sure you watch to the end because at the end we're gonna unveil our 2023 scrap quilt and have a giveaway. So that is Brick House. Again, completely free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. You just go to our site and download it and it will always be there. And this is like the third or fourth year we've done a scrap quilt, so we have a lot. Um, our next sew along just started last week. Oh, we've got somebody from Lago Vista. Never seen chat go so fast. Oh, so fun. So, so the next one is um, Scrappy Strings too. Now we just started a quilt along with this. Find more information on my Friday live stream from last Friday. But I wanted to show you Scrappy Strings. So we're gonna show you my original Scrappy Strings designed by Lori Holt. And when I did this one, I took my scraps, I followed the pattern in Scrappiness is Happiness, and I think I did two to three per collection. So this one you'll find in the quilt a couple of times, like this one right here, and this one right here, the same collection. So this one is really fun because I just used leftover scraps and used um, three to four blocks from each collection. I put a minky, which is like a really nice soft backing on here. For my, because I was putting, now I used a 90 inch wide minky, which are really awesome because you don't have to piece the seams because it's really hard. I would say if you're gonna put a minky on the back, piecing the seam is really difficult. Um, but this one I was able to put a label in the front, which is really fun. And Teresa did the binding for me and she followed our video from Miss Rosie on how to make a fat binding. But I loved this quilt. I did use the interfacing by Lori Holt. I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. But even though I did use interfacing, I did put batting in here. So, super exciting. So we're gonna pull this one just so you can see, and then I'm gonna show you my next quilt I'm gonna do with it. So this one I'm gonna keep, but the next couple I'll probably, the next one I make I'll probably auction off. So this is interfacing that we finally have back in stock by Lori Holt. It's nice and thin. But that has 81 blocks. So if you look at the pattern, it's eight blocks by 10. Now, what I would encourage you to do is you could do any size. You could do 12 and a half, 10 and a half. You can do any size block you want. But I would recommend Lori's interfacing because some of the other interfacing is a little bit too thick for this quilt. So I decided now that that one's done, I'm going to make some blocks. Now this time, I'm gonna do it totally different. I'm gonna do one block per collection. So this one is Buttercup and Slate. And these are, you're gonna see the same collections you saw from um, Brick House. Stateside by Sweetwater, American Beauty by Robin Pandolf, Sunwashed by Cory Yoder, Stitched by Fig Tree. I'm going to kind of move them. And I kind of got addicted to this quilt. I never thought I would love a quilt so much, but I know this is a great one I'll be able to auction off. Cinnamon and Cream, Fig Tree. So these are all the same collections I just showed you, just using that same. And the book I'm looking in is this little quilt planner that we sell. Oh yeah, it's called The Quilting Journal. And I have to have it during videos because I sew so much I can't remember. So you can see like I have notes for myself. This one is Stitched by Fig Tree. No, it's not. No, that's uh, Fig Tree Favorites. I'm gonna move these up. But I hope that in some way I inspire you. My goal on this video is just to show you seven quilts, 
have fun, use your scraps. Um, that's something I learned a long time ago from Lori Holt. This is Daisy Fields by Bev McCullough and this is Calico by Lori Holt. And I'm gonna show you a tip on trimming down, but one thing I wanted to show you about this quilt is you can do it any layout. So my last one I did eight by 10, so that would be 80 blocks. You could do 10 by 10 and that would be 100 blocks. My goal is this time, instead of making three per collection, I'm just gonna do one and then I'm gonna auction it off. And if I make it eight by 10, then whoever buys the quilt for charity gets 80 collections in a quilt, which will be totally fun. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about using creativity when you're quilting. So this is a great way you can rotate the blocks this way and have kind of a little circle going. Or you could have them all go the same direction and it would look more like a stripe which would be really cool. Another thing you could do is make it like a wave. You could make it like where it goes like a wave. So um, the back of the blocks, this is how it looks. And I just use the Lori Holt interface seam. Now she is coming out with some 10 inch squares. It's slightly bigger than what you need but um, it is a non-fusible interfacing and very thin, so it works with this. And again, the pattern is in Scrappiness is Happiness. And I'm gonna kinda show you how to trim it down and kind of some different tips I have found. So I went ahead and just cut my squares according to the Scrappiness is Happiness pattern. It is bigger. So if you bought the 10 inch squares that Lori's coming out with, that would be bigger than this. You could just trim down to nine and a half or a different size and make it bigger. Um, you, you definitely need interfacing for this block. The reason I say that is if you just start sewing and you don't have interfacing, this would be all wavy. I, that would have been a good thing to show, but it would have been wavy and it would have, if you would have done this, that would have been all bias and it would be a mess. Um, I don't know if you could use batting. That might be pretty bulky when you start sewing your blocks together. So I would definitely make it this way. Do you have the rotary? So let's see. Oh, I don't know what I did with the rotary cutter. We'll find it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So on this one, one thing I found is when I first started making these, I would cut from here. But I realize that's not a great idea because if you cut from here, you might not get all the interfacing. So what I have found is cut from the back. And I wanna make sure I get the interfacing in here. So like I could come down here to get more of the stripe or go up here. I usually just center it, but I do wanna make sure I've got everything to the edge. So I just trim two. Now, since I'm starting with scraps, I'm trimming a little bit off and that's totally fine. And then when you put these together, the best advice I have is to use a design wall so that you can do your layout, look at what you think, and then also keep your designer separate so that you get the colors. Oh, Lori says, you look so cute. And of course I love your blocks. Thank you, Lori. I get to see Lori in seven days. I'm so excited. Okay, so rotary cutter. This is the only rotary cutter I use. It's an ergonomic Ulfa. I have had a really hard time using anything else. So um, a lot of people use the splash. I just, for some reason, have only been able to use this one. Oh, Teresa, thank you. She says, thanks for everything you do. Do I put the interfacing on after sewing the strips? No, so let me see my strip uh, box and I'll show you how you do it. And all this is in Lori's book. But what you do is you cut random sizes. Those sizes are in the book. And this is gonna be not the best example because it's not wide enough. But you start in the center, assume my strip is long enough. You put your fabrics right sides together. 
stitch with a quarter inch seam and press. And then you just keep building. And this is a Lori Holt pattern. Totally not my pattern, totally not my idea. So definitely buy her book. And um, these are just shorter. These are to show you something else, but it's really easy. Thank you to Glory Torres. Quilting saved me from depression and I only started quilting when I found socialites one day on YouTube. You don't know how much good you do on a regular day. Thank you, hugs from Massachusetts. Thank you. And it is non-woven, I guess. It's um, like when you pull it, it doesn't move. Kind of like uh, fabric, when you do length of fabric, you kind of want it to have that stiffness. Is there a ruler that actually says where to cut? For example, 5 eighths and 7 eighths. No, not that I know of. What sewing table do I recommend? I love Juki, but I think it needs to be more stable. You know, I had one custom made, but I think like Horn is really good. Um, Ke Koala maybe, I think is really good. I'm not sure. I think the key with the Juki is to have the bed on it because that kind of holds it down. Um, thank you to Katie Bryant of Kitten and Stitches. Oh, thank you. How much is the package of interfacing? So it's three yards, it's 20 inches by 108, and to make each quilt you need two. And that's what I'm using. So, and I'm gonna be auctioning off my quilts. So you can kind of look forward to, if you wanna watch me every Friday, um, trying to make it a better world. Okay, so we're gonna, that's number two. We're gonna move to number three, which, not sure what you guys are gonna think so I've kind of shown you this before but I'm gonna show you a pop-up image real quick and this is the layout that I've decided to do for this quilt so we're gonna I'm gonna make 80 blocks 8 by 10 and I'm gonna be using the economy block paper by it's Emma and I'm gonna be using low volume and that's the layout I'm gonna use so if you want to take a screenshot of that and I will give you all the information. Another thing you can look at if you wanna do a different layout is we have free guides for six inch blocks and 12 inch blocks. Now you could use this for any block. You don't have to just use it for economy or a log cabin or pineapple paper. And they're free at Fat Quarter Shop. And like you can see, you can do a wall hanging, a crib, a lap, it tells you how many blocks to lay it out. So this is a free PDF, and there's also one right in the front of your economy pad, paper pad. So this one right here, I'm gonna show you my blocks. And I decided to do this one a little bit ago because, is this the farthest we can zoom out? Okay, perfect, that's good. So I. I decided to do this because I don't use low volumes very much. Now you're gonna have to imagine that I have these, well, let me just do the collection separate so that I'm making two from each collection. So I'll just show you one from each. And I'm trying to do something just a little bit different. I'm not sure what I think of it yet. We'll have to see. This one will also get auctioned off. So these are those same fabric collections that we had before. So here you can see 15 of them. I think I've made 30. So these are all different collections. Now what I'm doing is I'm making two from each collection because when you cut the square, you cut it on the half. So you get, um, you get two from each but I'm gonna show you what I think might look good. So this weekend, actually yesterday I picked this out. These are two fabrics from Lori Holt. Let's see. This one is C745 denim, and this one's 12039 denim. And they were in my stash. So I decided that I'm gonna do something like this with that same layout I already showed you. I'm gonna lay these out and kind of show you my vision for it. And again, this one's gonna be auctioned off so you guys can look forward to the auction. So this is just a way to use up all of my leftovers. 
And we are gonna have a giveaway at the end, so make sure you stay tuned. And I only have some of these cut because this is for my stash. This was from a fat quarter, I think. So from this quilt, if you're gonna make this one, you need to make 178 one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles, which quite coincidentally look just like the mat. And then I'm gonna use the same cornerstones here. I had thought about using, it's kind of hard to tell, but I had thought about using a low volume here, but when I was cutting them, the blocks just totally lose their form. So if you wanna make it like me, you'll cut 99 one and a half inch squares, 178 one and a half by six and a half inch rectangles, and since I'm making two from each and I need 80 blocks, this will have 40 collections. So um, this pattern is just a free layout, but here is the economy pad. You use this economy pad. Um, Lori Holt, this is hilarious. For those of you asking, I don't think I'll get Kimberly to like purple. It looks to me 10 years, it took her 10 years to get to so scrappy. Absolutely true. Everything in this video is inspired by Lori because she inspires me every day and inspires me to be a better person and to sew scrappy. Um, so this paper, this quilt is just, you just print that layout. These are the rectangles and the border that I'm gonna do is gonna be five and a half inches cut. And I'll probably love, never love, never love purple. Um, but maybe one day. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a tip on cutting this block so that if you're ever using the foundation paper, you can see for yourself. And sorry about this big old mess, but I do have everything in my little box. So I'll just kind of throw it all in my box. And I'll start piecing these together into rows soon so that you guys can see them. But what I'm gonna show you is this is the front of a block, and I don't place it all the same. You can see, I just use the same fabrics, but I don't place them all the same. And here's the back after you pull the paper off. The reason I love this paper, and this is a Lori Holt paper, so Lori designed this. The reason I love it is I have never had luck with square and a square. So you can do double square and a square. Square and a square here, and square and a square here, and I'm gonna show you how to cut it down. There's two ways you can do it. You could put this on the front. This is a Creative Grid six inch ruler, six and a half because we're making six inch blocks. And you could take this and line up a quarter inch away, quarter inch away, quarter inch away. You could do that, but that's a lot of work. The best thing to do is turn it over and put this right on these outside lines and trim. And then I'm gonna give you some tips on foundation paper. So you don't even have to think because you just cut right on those lines. Do, 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 do. So, and then you just pull your paper off. Now I'm gonna give you a tip. It's really good when you're sewing anything with foundation paper, whether it's triangles on a roll, triangle paper from a different manufacturer, maybe you're doing foundation piecing um, from a designer that does like animals or something. If you use size 90 needle and you do a short stitch length, this will come off easily. And I would pull from the outside to the end. This fabric right here is an older collection. It is Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And I used a layer cake on this and I needed it to do an example. So um, we do still have that. Oh, thank you, Valerie. She says she's inspired because she just purchased this foundation paper. And you could do the same thing with 12 inch. You would just change your sashing to two and a half by 12 and a half and two and a half inch squares. And this is a traditional block, that's where the name came from, and Lori designed six inch paper and 12 inch paper. And um, if you don't wanna get up to iron, you can use the seam press roller. Now, you, 
I didn't press any of these open, it would be impossible to with this paper. Um, the interfacing works perfect if you don't pre-wash because, in fact, Lori Holt does not pre-wash or starch her fabric and she uses it. Carla says she's loving the nighttime show. Thank you so much. Um, so we've got that. That's our third. So if you have any questions, let me know. That's our number three quilt. Let's see. The next quilt is their log cabin quilt. And this one's really fun. I had a lot of fun working on this one. So this is kind of the same thing. Foundation paper. What I love about foundation paper is you stitch on the line and you get perfect results. You don't have to, like for example with the brick house, you don't have to cut your pieces bigger and pull it down, cut it down to make it fit. But I've always loved log cabins. So Jordan's gonna show us the first pop-up, which is I was inspired by Sweet Escape by Thimble Blossoms. This is her layout that she has on this pattern, and I love it, I've always wanted to make it. So I decided I'm gonna make the layout with the paper and make it with paper instead. So I'm gonna kinda show you what those blocks look like. So these blocks, I'm gonna try to kinda these, I'm just doing one per collection, and I'll auction this off too. So most of these, a lot of these will, will get auctioned off. And then next year, I'll come up with a whole nother set of things to auction. Okay, this one right here, where I have that little pin, that means that my fabric was a little short, and that's just to remind me. And I am using just random backgrounds that have no busyness to them. Hopefully I have enough to do a full star. Let's see. Yay, okay, I have enough to do a full star, I think. Let's see, this one goes that way. So basically I'm gonna be making four of these. So I'm just gonna make one from each and I will auction this one off. So this is gonna be here, and this is going to be here. This is, this is before it's trimmed down. And here I'll just put six and a half inch cut squares. And I do use a smaller stitch length when I'm doing foundation paper. Did I break my rule and allow Kevin to watch the live stream this time? Absolutely not. When he left, I said, you're banned. Nope, I bet my kids are watching though. Hi kids. They'll probably jump in chat. Um, they're probably watching, but no, he cannot watch. I will, I cannot, I will just quit if he watches. So this is kind of my inspiration for this one. Thank you to Bonnie Eisenhower. Um, I would love to see FQS make foundation paper for the hourglass pattern. Okay, I'll look into that. What size needle? Okay, I use size 90, top stitch, or universal, either one. So, now I'm gonna show you how to trim this one down, same thing as before, and then I'm gonna show you some other things you can do with log cabin paper. So the same thing here, you just trim around and you just place your ruler right on that. And this one, I am going to show you how to pull the paper and some tips on pulling paper when you're working with foundation paper. And for the log cabin paper, you need one and a half inch strips. And Lori's going to be so excited because I haven't told her yet. I'm starting to save my one and a half inch strips. So these are left over from something you're going to see in a little bit. So I am going to start saving one and a half inch strips and two and a half inch strips. But what I wanna show you, when you're working with foundation paper, it's best to start from the outside and go around in reverse of the number. And it should just pull right off. And we have done some demos for the foundation papers on our channel, but I could always do it again. With so many men quilting, Kevin should quilt too. Oh, y'all, Kevin has to do the flash sales. He has to buy inventory. He has to fix the website. I, if we were both quilting, I don't know what would happen. The website would go down. You'll have no idea. He is like the man of the hour because I cannot do any of the things he does. 
I bet he could though. He knows how to cut fabric just fine. So I mean, I'm sure he would, if I asked him to make a quilt, he would do it. So yeah, just go around and usually this first one, I usually start with glue. So that one sometimes is hard to come off. And then if you want to, you can trim off these little guys. There looks like there's only like two. So that's my first log cabin paper that I'm gonna do. That's my first log cabin quilt. So I just have to make 36 more because I have I have 12, so I need 48. So super excited about that. I will auction it off and I'll probably just do one background here. These are all scrappy backgrounds though. So that's my first one. My second one, Jordan's gonna show you some layouts. And we're just gonna scroll through. Now these are different layouts you can do with the same color combo. And in each of these, it tells you how many blocks, the size, and Sarah did all these layouts for me. So thank you to Sarah. So you could do this layout instead of the Sweet Escape layout. You can do, there's so many options. I also wanted to show you that all of that is in the front of your log cabin pad. It is also on our website free, upside down, just like the log cabin is. It's the same, just like the economy is. So it's the same thing. But you could print that out and use it for anything that's six and 12. So that's my first thing I'm gonna do. But then I got really excited. I love working with the paper. So this weekend I thought, okay, I'm doing this. But one thing about doing this is I don't always have a lot of backgrounds left over. So when I was doing these blocks, I only had enough background to make one block. I couldn't make two or three because I had enough of the dark, but not the light. So I thought, let me make one just all scrappy, all random. So this is Calico by Lori Holt. This is Shine On by Bonnie and Camille. And I think this one's great. I love this one. This one, I don't love these two prints. So if I was gonna do it again, I would definitely not put anything with medium or light. I don't think those look great. So um, this was just to show you what you can do with scrappy or multicolored. The next one I'm loving. So this one is all reds from Lori Holt. I made a quilt two years ago, and those are from my scraps from the red quilt. This is my scraps from Branching Out that I made in January. So I just already had everything starched. And then these three down here are from Random Bonnie and Camille Collections. Now, the great thing about this is they look awesome. I love them. I'm gonna make a rainbow quilt out of this. I might keep this one. I might reserve the right to keep it. The only thing is, it will take me a while to get there because I, this is three different collections combined. These were already in buckets and that's like two or three collections combined. Um, we do have pineapple log cabin papers. So, um, and the reason for the interfacing is so it doesn't stretch. And we do have more six inch, um, we don't have any eight inch in the works, but we do have a four inch in the works. So these are some options for log cabin. Now I'm gonna trim one down. I just have to find the one that needs, oh, I already trimmed it down. Yeah, I already trimmed it down, sorry, forgot. So lots of options, you can do, I'll show you my three options. But these, I just did these all on Saturday and it was super fun. So this is leftover from the Scrappiness is Happiness. So you could do multicolored, you could do half white, half dark, or all one color. So super fun, that's your log cabin and that's four. That's my fourth, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna answer questions and say hi to people. So let's see, Simply Third Street. How many layer cakes would you need to make the scrappiness square in a square quilt? I, two, three, four, something like that. I don't know that answer. I think three or four would be safe. 
A uh, question for Kimberly. My nephew asked his girlfriend to marry him. Has Kimberly or Lori or anyone watching ever made a wedding ring quilt? No, but there is a block called Proposal and it is in the Oh Happy Day book by Corey Yoder and it's got like four rings with a center ring and that would look beautiful if you made that block and just put it, replicated it and just kept your circles all different colors that would look gorgeous. I have tried a wedding ring, the curved piecing and that was just not for me. Do I starch my backing? Yes, I do. Is there a tutorial on how to use the interfacing? No, but I'm about to do a video later this week that I'm going to show soon that I can put some tips in there. Oh, Lori says she's excited. Okay, good. Yay. When I ironed my light colored fabrics, they turned darker. Bought a new iron and it still happens. I don't know. I don't know. That hasn't happened to me, so I'm not sure. June Duck, thank you for the evening line stream. Thank you for watching. I'm so excited y'all guys are watching. When do you have time for sewing all this? This goes for you too, Lori. Me and Lori, we're in this club together. It's called Workaholics Anonymous. So um, we don't, there's no breaks in life. Um, I'm a great mom though, I will tell you. My kids, I am there for my kids anytime I need to be. Friday I got lucky because, well, I shouldn't say this the game got rained out. So I ended up with like three or four hours because we were on the way to the game and they canceled or they said lightning delay and then we went to eat. And so, you know, sometimes things get canceled and it helps me out. Uh, Lainey says, woohoo, loving this time for the live. Thanks so much, Kimberly and FQS. I'm a newbie and you have helped me so much with accuracy and end results. Your tips are priceless. Thank you. Electric quilt question from Laura Hamilton. I'm contemplating purchasing it. If I want to lay out socialize, would I be able to add the layout to EQ? We don't have that into it, that format, uh, but I do think if you join Socialites Lounge on Facebook that somebody has maybe made that. And current designs are not incorporated, so you can like go to the manufacturer and click each image and save it. Can I recommend a white tone on tone that looks like a snowflakes? Um, Kimberbell Basics has one. I don't know the SKU, but if you just type Kimberbell Basics snowflakes on Fat Quarter Shop, we have it. Can I starch the background for a Jolly Bar kit? Yes, but you cannot starch a Jolly Bar. So I would either, when you're doing a quilt, either starch it all or starch none. Oh, Lori has the interfacing. Yay! So Lori did a tutorial on her interfacing on her channel. It's called Scrappy Strings Block. That's where you want to watch because I'm using her pattern anyway. Awesome. Okay, so now I've shown you four quilts. The next three I came up with like over time and they all happen to be spool quilts. So um, it's something to look forward to for 2023 and kind of crazy that they're all spools, but I think you're going to like them. So the first one is by Lori Holt, So Scrappy Spools. And this one I started sewing recently, a couple weekends ago. Now, this is a very beginner pattern and Lori and I will be hosting a sew along starting January, 2023. There are 16 different blocks and I'm gonna show you all the blocks that I've made and give you some tips. And each week, if you watch me on the Friday, I will give you a tip on each block. So the first three are, they're called sew four patch blocks and you make four of them for the quilt. Some of these, I'm only gonna show you a couple because at the end I'm gonna show them to you in the full, full, full um, spool. Now this, quilt right here was mocked up in the Scrappy Prints Fat Quarter Bundle and the Scrappy Backgrounds Fat Quarter Bundle by Lori on Fat Quarter Shop. I wanted to do different, so I'm stitching this in the Calico Collection by Lori that is coming out in December. So this is the first three. The next three are called Sew Cabin and you're going to make four of these. And again, you're going to see three because I have sewn them up. 
and I will be giving tips on my Friday live stream. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe, like, and click your notifications. This is so checkers, you'll make four. And you can see these are all very, very, very uh, beginner. This is the so dash block. And this one I can show you all four. And I think I, yeah, I think I pressed open on everything just for the fun of it. And I did all of these in one weekend. The flag block, you're gonna make three. So I can show you two and I'll show you the next one in a little bit. These all measure five and a half. So if you make these and make them bigger, you can use the Creative Grids five and a half inch ruler to trim down, which is what I did. This next one was the hardest. This is called the Sew Flower Block. And um, I struggled with this one. This is one of the last ones I did. And I really, like you can see right there, I have a duck pleat right there. I gotta fix that. So, ooh, I'm gonna leave that out to fix. The next one was easy, Sew Geese. This one I have a mistake that I'm gonna show you during the live stream in 2023 where I show you my mistake. <laughs> Cause I don't know what I was doing, but I ended up wasting some fabric and had to buy more. Um, well, I had to get more for my stash cause I made a mistake. You're gonna make four of those. On the heart, you're gonna make three. It's called Sew so Heart. And then Sew so Patchwork. So pinwheel, this one was obviously the easiest because I used triangle paper. This is called So Plus. Super easy. This one is So Stamps and I do have written out some instructions that I'm gonna tell you in January about when you start this different things you can do, different things you can cut off of each fat quarter before you start so you don't have to cut all of this because you've cut it at the beginning. So this one's Sew Stamps, Sew Star. This one's fun because it overlaps and so you don't have to match your point. And you're gonna make four of those. This is so stripes and the same thing, I kind of give you a tip in the beginning of what to cut of these so you have plenty. Super easy. Same thing, I pressed open, I did cut everything a little bit bigger, trimmed down. So triangles, just half square triangles. And this one's really fun because my leftovers here the other side of these half square triangles are in my half square triangle bucket. You make four of those. The tulips, so tulips you make, I think you make four. And then from there, I'm gonna show you a little funny. Here's my pattern. Why is that cut? I cut the pattern. I was cutting fabric and I cut part of my pattern off, so that was not good. But then what you do, so I'm gonna do those throughout January, but what you wanna do after that is sew them into a spool. So I sewed these together and I'm gonna show you the fabrics I have picked beside this, besides this and show you how to cut one down. So Lori actually colored this for me with Sarah, so I was lucky to so if you want to do this with us and you want to make it the same, you can use a calico fat quarter bundle. Now what we're doing for the spool top is 12 842 tea dyed and it won't come out until December. This background is 747 cottage. And then in between the rows will be this, this print. And this is 12860 Cottage. So when that comes in, I will buy some of that. And so my border, my sashing will be different background than my block background. So that'll be fun. 
and my binding. I cut all of these at the beginning and I had Teresa go ahead and sew them together. So my binding is ready to go. And I'm gonna give you a tip on how to get these perfect. Okay, this is a standalone pattern. It came free with the Scrappiness is Happiness book if you pre-ordered it. If you didn't, you can now purchase it on Fat Quarter Shop. And then for triangle paper, you go with, if you're looking at the pattern, um, if it, it, we have a guide on our site, download that, that is gonna give you your best result. So this is what it looks like. Just search half square triangle cheat sheet on Fat Quarter Shop and it will help you tell you what you'll need. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you what I did to make my blocks come out perfect, which I know is extra work. So what I do, when you look at your pattern, I cut these a quarter inch wider. So when I sewed it in my block, it's a quarter inch wider. Now my top and my bottom, I don't have any extra to show you because I only had enough to make the six blocks. I have to wait for more to come in. Um, I used fat quarters for all of the spools and I'm gonna use yardage for the spool tops, background, and sashing. And the heart is supposed to be sideways because the blocks rotate. So I followed this layout. In fact, I followed this crazy layout right here. <laughs> Which is my notes. It's Sarah and Lori colored it and then I numbered them and then circled them as I finished them. And so I, um, you can see the heart is, side, is sideways right here. So what I did is I cut those bigger on the side and then I made these the same width but a little bit taller. And if you take an eight and a half inch square ruler and I used a friction pen to draw my line so that I wouldn't make a mistake and you just trim all four sides. And then when you trim, you get all those leftover, all your leftover threads off. And then it looks perfect. I'm gonna show you the back of the blocks because we're getting some questions on the back. All of these I pressed open. And on the pinwheels, everything is pressed open. So these I pressed open. I always press open. I never do the twist method. I don't know why I've tried it and just have never gotten it to where, I feel like it weakens the seam. So everything I did on this is pressed open. Okay, so I am going to tell you what I'm doing on this one again. So this one, I'm gonna use the Calico Fat Quarter Bundle. I got extra, I got fabric from Riley Blake to start ahead. My spool top is 12842 T-dye, which is coming in December, and you need two yards. My spool background, you need one and three quarter yards, and I'm using C747 Cottage. For the sashing and border, two and three quarter yards, and I'm using 12860 Cottage. I'm doing scrappy binding and I haven't picked my backing yet. Um, but one thing I did do for the backing is I've already made my label. So I get these labels from Sweetwater and I had a big one and I was hoping to have a label big enough that could be, you know, the five and a half inch square, but I didn't. So I just added some extra that was left over and then made this and this will go in the center of my backing. I have not picked Oh, I did pick my backing, but it's not here yet. It's one of her new wide backs. So, um, and then this will all be on a blog post. I think it's actually already on a blog post that you can go to, and our blog is the Jolly Jabber, and we have a ton of stuff on our blog that lists what I'm going to do so that you can always follow along. Okay, let's see the next question. I'm watching, listening to football with my left ear and FQS with my right ear. Oh my gosh, I gotta be more entertaining than football. 
Any tips for reading patterns? I'm new to quilting with patterns and no matter how careful I read, I always end too short or too many. So one thing that's really helpful when you're working with patterns is to use sticky notes. Put notes. Um, if you look at my pattern I used, do you have it, Denise? The one, I make all kinds of notes. So one thing that's helpful is if you just write notes to yourself. So like, here's my notes. So this tells me what I made bigger than this. Make notes, write all over it. And that's what I do. Put all kinds of notes. After watching your channel, I started doing labels and including them as part of the back. Thanks for the great idea. Thank you, thank you for watching. How do I not burn my fingers when I press open? So um, if you um, let your block sit for a little bit, um, then it helps. Super Chat, Amy Leach, thank you for all you do. FQS service is perfection, thank you. When using your quarter inch foot with guide on your Juki, do you find your blocks turn out the right side? Yes. The Juki foot that comes with the Juki machine is actually measured in centimeters. And I could never get it to work. So there's a quarter inch foot by Juki that Lisa Bonjean sells that is different than the one that comes with the machine and that is what I use and it's accurate. Ooh, I would like to try cross stitching. Can you recommend something? Yes, I would recommend you come visit me this Wednesday on Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. And we have lots of tips there. When will the planning live stream happen? December. What designers do I use the most? Okay, Lori Holt, Bonnie and Camille, Fig Tree, Corey Yoder, Sherry and Chelsea. Yep, that's about what I use. Okay, so that's our first spool quilt. Now the next two are smaller. And I'm gonna show those to you. So this next one is the mini spools pattern by Camille Ross Kelly. And I just thought it was so cute. And I had that bucket of one and a half inch strips that I've been keeping. And so it's another thing that if you cut a one and a half inch strip off, you can use on this pattern. So what I've done I have blocks everywhere, is I've made some blocks. And these are the same collections as Brick House. So this is like Daisy Fields. I didn't write the collections down because they're all just kind of leftovers. But what I want to show you is my, my goal on this. Let's see. Let's see. And then I'm going to tell you my big boo-boo. So I was thinking they rotated. So I was thinking they went like this. So I was trying to make all my stripes go the same direction, but they don't rotate. They all go the same way. So I have to figure out if I'm gonna do redo blocks or if I'm just going to do every other one a different way. So my goal here, let's see is I tried to do by color. So I tried to find three strips. So this is like three strips from Bev McCullough, three strips from Sherry and Chelsea, three strips from Corey Yoder, I think. Um, but I did color. And so what I'm doing is when you do that, this is how it ends up looking. It's just a three patch, super easy. So I am going to make, um, let's see how many we need to make. Oh, I'm gonna make this one larger. So I'm not sure how big I'm gonna make it, but I am gonna make it larger. And I think I'm gonna keep this one for my sewing room. And my SKUs on this, um, this one is a Riley Blake fabric. It's C715 silver. And this is a body and Camille background, 55232-17. And I put notes, like kind of notes on what I need to do. And here are some leftover. 
I kind of tried to also make sure no low volumes were in here. But I wanted to show you, these are all left over. This one probably wouldn't work because it's too light. But these, I didn't have enough. Take that one out. I didn't have enough to pair it with. So I'll save them and like these two, all I need is one more blue. But I'll keep like my grays together. And this is super simple pattern. It's a little bit more advanced just because these are, you have to line this up. And with my scrappy spools that I just showed you, that one is easier because you don't have to line that up. So I'm going to show you that. So this one, the spool doesn't line up right there. So it's a little bit easier to piece. But this one's really fun. It's going to be all about color and color placement. And it's fun to do a combination of big blocks, small blocks. And this is all about color and it's going to be great and i can't wait but i i um these will go i'm going to save these and keep them in the box with this and then if i don't use them i'll put them in this container later and then these i kind of did that same thing where these are cut wider and then this is cut taller and then i trimmed it down oh i have some photos to show you actually now that I remember so that first photo is you see those center pieces I made bigger and I trim each side and then the next one is where I cut the top and the bottom and I just use a creative grids four inch ruler to trim that down so that's a way you can cheat on that so that is my sixth quilt Trying to mix designers, fabric, all the things. Oh, and let's go over some super chats. Let's see. $19.99 from Barbara Mangel. Thank you, Kimberly, for the tutorials. I do learn so much. Thank you. And then thank you to Pauline Dean. Thank you for all you do. I've learned so many new techniques that help me be a more accurate quilter. Awesome. And then on this last quilt, the Spools Mini, I have not picked my binding or my backing. Small is cute. I love the spools lined up. It looks hard to do the frame. Thank you for being an encouraging, hardworking teacher. Love you. Uh, let's see. California. Those look perfect. No, the heart block is over. It's not wrong. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to go to the last quilt. Not the least. This one's really fun. So this one's all about color, too. So this is a new pattern from Thimble Blossoms called Threadbare. And Lori has encouraged me over the years to start, start um, saving squares. And it took me like 10 years. She's not joking. So these are my five and a half inch square bucket. And the only reason I started is she sent me this for my birthday one year. She sent me a label maker. And then when I talked to her, she was like, yeah, that's so you can measure your, 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 you can measure your scrap boxes. So awesome. So I thought with this quilt, I don't have to use scraps from 2023. I can use this. So I'm going to show you kind of what I came up with. I made a couple of blocks. I'm going to talk a little bit about color. This right here, let's see. C715 gray. It is a Riley Blake fabric. And actually in the quilt, it goes like this. They alternate. And this one is 16740 color 200. This is beyond Bella background. And this is one that I made bigger that I'm going to show you how to trim down. So when I was trying to decide on this quilt, I wanted a very uh, contrasting gray and white. So I found two grays and whites that I liked. And then I started pulling. Now if I put this in there, and I put this in there, let's see. Stuff starts getting busy. Too many colors. Too much all over the place like none of it starts matching 
So I decided the best thing to do on this quilt is to go through and use prints like this that have one color with a white. They all have one color with a white. So like this one I could use, this one, but I would not use this or this, but I could use this. And what I'm gonna try to do, this block um, or this quilt, let's see how many, it has 64 um, spools. So I'm going to go through this stack and pick as many as I can that are just two color and make a quilt. I'm gonna do the layout just like Camille. I am pressing open so that I, well, here I'm not, but these, because when you put these together, I don't wanna have to worry about what direction. And then when you do this seam right here, you're gonna have all of that meeting, so pressing open would be best. And this one is just to be scrappy. All of these quilts, except for the calico quilt, are scrappy. The calico is just one collection. But this one I'm just gonna pull from all different designers. So this is probably Corey Yoder, Bonnie and Camille, Corey Yoder, um, Fig Tree. You know, I'm just gonna pick a lot of different colors and I'll show you how I'm gonna trim this one down. But this one should whittle this down a little bit. This one right here ends up nine and a half. So I have drawn with the friction pin and what you wanna do is you want this diagonal line to really line up on that seam. And that just gets all the little fuzzies off. And I'm gonna have 64 of these. Now to show you from the end of the year, I, at the beginning of the year, we had an Arthel sew down challenge and it was to use up spools. So I have now used two spools and um, two full spools. So that's pretty awesome. This is the RFL that I use, color 2000. And then a new thing I'm doing is saving these half square triangles from different collections. I'm gonna have a members only video in December talking about this. But this morning, we unveiled our brand new 2023 scrap quilts completely free. So, this one is going to be 56 by 64, and it uses six different blocks. So, it's got blocks with two and a half inch squares. These are like the setting. And then block one, two, three four, five, six. So actually seven blocks, but these all are two and a half inch unfinished. So what I'm gonna do is show you one of the blocks. If I did this totally scrappy, now I don't have the background, but if you do this totally scrappy, this one won't work. You can use these that I've been asking you to save. And this is kind of a standard size, the two and a half. I seem to have a lot of those left over. So I think that's the right layout. So you'll be able to use these with this and you will also be able to use this which is my two and a half inch square bucket that Lori tried to get me to start collecting 10 years ago and so these can be used on the corners or especially in the block one which is this block right here so I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that so 2023 is definitely going to be a scrappy year. And with this one, you can also use uh, H100, H200 paper. 
and one of the blocks does use the four inch square to square paper. So that is what I have for you guys to inspire you in some way. And I'm gonna answer any questions you have. So any questions you have, let me know. Let's see, how do I store my scraps? Um, in these little buckets. And then like, for example, the red block that I showed you, I have all that red together. I have a little bucket with some yellow from the green strips left over. So if I have a collection at the end, I try to cut up and put in my square boxes. And then if I have any leftover, um, like a lot left over, I'll keep it all together. So I use a 1.5 stitch length when I'm pressing my seams open and when I'm stitching normally. And when I use paper like this, I use like a 1.2. And thread color does matter. I like to use color 2000. It's just like a very plain color. Here's a couple of colors right here. So this is color 2021. This is the color Lori uses the most. This is color 2000. It's the color I use the most. And this is color 2024. It's also white and 2600 so those are the best selling colors that we sell at Fat Quarter Shop but I pretty much 90% of the time use 2000. Do I have a video for pieced backing? Um, do you think I have a video for pieced backing? When we did heartfelt we did a piece backing um, yeah I'll, I'll do some what do I love sewing most about a Juki? Okay, so Michelle, I love the Juki. I fell in love with it. I have three or four of them. It's ridiculous. I do not need that many. Um, I love it because it goes fast. And when I'm sewing, I don't have very much time. So I need to go as fast as possible. And it lets me do that. I also like the knee lift and I like that I can cut the thread with my foot. And also I've had some machines before when you start sewing that sometimes they'll like catch and make a big bird's eye nest, you know, when you're starting and there's like an ugly seam and it doesn't do that. What size creative grids ruler should I start with? Well, it depends. So if you're going to do a lot of six and a half inch blocks, you could do six and a half. If you're going to make bigger blocks, start with the 12 and a half. We do sell a set that has two and a half three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, and six and a half all together. Um, I just use so many rulers, um, so many square rulers. And I, this weekend, I was like, I don't even know where my rulers are because I had fabric everywhere and rulers everywhere. So I would say it's really hard because sometimes I for, like I get disorganized with rulers everywhere. And cotton thread is what you're supposed to use for cotton fabric because it's supposed to shrink at the same rate. But do whatever you want. If you want to use poly, use poly. You can do whatever you want. It's your quilt. Do I sell circle closures that are on your triangles on a roll? Soon we will. What happens to the interfacing when you wash the quilt? So um, it just shrinks just like batting wood. Oh, thank you to Victoria Hill. Let's see. Thanks so much for amazing tutorials. So helpful for new quilters. Cheers. Um, Casey Shaw, thank you for the super chat. Please do more night lives. Thank you, but I can never watch in the morning. Okay, so you guys have to let me know, like once a quarter, would that be good? Um, the quilts behind me, this quilt right here is our charity 2023 quilt called Bountiful. It will be a completely free pattern, a benefiting Make-A-Wish, and I'm gonna show you some pictures in a little bit of my Make-A-Wish friend. Uh, this quilt is Summer Picnic from the brand new Summer Memories book by Susan Aki. Oh, uh, one of my kids is saying hi. Hi, Christopher. I'm about to show a picture of you, so don't log off. Don't log off. The, okay, what was my intention to keep the same designer for the spool blocks? No, my intention is to just use Scrappy. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some pictures before we have a giveaway of my kids. So this first uh, picture, we went to a Make-A-Wish event, and I don't know why I didn't take my sunglasses off. Um, I don't know why one of my kids didn't tell me to take my sunglasses off, but that's Patton. And you guys with the Make-A-Wish uh, donations this year have sent her to Hawaii, and she did the event called 
Repel Austin, where she, you'll see in a second what she did. That's my son, Will, on the left. My son, no, yeah, Peyton on the right. Patton with her gear on. And then these are some pictures. Oh, that's that's us waiting for Patton to go down the down the building. But look, she got all the way at the top of that building and came down. It was amazing. And so uh, she raised money. So she was, um, so go back to that one. So she was a Make-A-Wish recipient in 2021 and she raised money. She had to raise $1,500 to do this. So everyone there had to raise money that goes to Make-A-Wish. And then all the people down there, those are the people watching. So um, I don't know if I'm down there or not because I kind of, when she started coming down, I kind of walked across the street. But um, that, they took that picture of her inside the building. And then that's her at the very end coming down. So she was so brave. So that was fun to get to watch her. And then that's Christopher who just said hi. It was his birthday Saturday. So that's him. And the next picture is Emma. So she is a Lake Travis Cavalette. And that was, I think, three games ago because the game Friday got canceled. And then, of course, we can't forget Piggy. He is so spoiled and so cute. And it is so hard to keep him in that dog bed in the car because he thinks he needs to be in my lap. Okay, so let's see. Thank you to Twyla Stone, loving the live during this time. Yeah, guys, let me know. Do you like it? Do you not? Um, would you want me to do this more? I have no idea. For Juki, I used the 2010Q and I have the white one. And then like two years ago during COVID, they came out with the platinum edition. And so I ended up buying one. And I remember Kevin was like, did you really need a silver sewing machine? I was like, oh yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't, I just bought it. I, I was like, it's totally, totally frivolous. Like I totally felt guilty buying it, but um, yeah. So uh, we're gonna do a giveaway. So I'm gonna show you the giveaway. We just launched the Jolly Box for this year. They taped it up because they don't trust me to not open it. So they taped it real good so I can't open it. So we are about 90% sold out, but we're gonna give away three of these boxes to enter. You're gonna comment when the video is over. And I wanna know, what did you like about the, li the nightly live stream? Did you like it? Did you learn something? And if you liked any of the quilts, which one will you make? Because I always wanna know what you're gonna make. And you have until Sunday, November 13th to enter and we'll pick three lucky winners and Ashley will post those in our community tab on November 14th. I hope all of you have a great week and come see me this Friday.